Hello, I'm Dr. Ellen Dillavu, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about vascular surgery practice trends in women. Women are an ever-increasing presence in vascular surgery, as in all of medicine. It's well known that women now comprise approximately 50% of all medical students, and it's been a challenge for surgeons to recruit talented female students interested in surgical careers. Women now number approximately 25% of general surgery residents. Vascular surgery fellows in a traditional two-year post-general surgery training program are approximately 12% female. This compares to 22% of residents in vascular integrated residencies being women. The difference in the traditional program and integrated residency numbers may be attributable to many factors. There is an attractiveness of a potentially shorter training period for the integrated program, and women choosing the integrated program at a younger age are less likely to have a family. Additionally, more women are currently in the field of vascular surgery and can serve as a continuous field of mentors to students. The field is not only becoming more accepting of women, but there are areas where women vascular surgeons are in demand. Women becoming board certified in general surgery has risen from 8% of all diplomats in 1986 to 25% in 2009, roughly a threefold increase. The percentage of female diplomats who sit for the vascular surgery exam has risen from nearly 3% in 1986 to over 12% in 2009, more than a fourfold increase. Although the percentage of female vascular surgeons is still less than that of general surgeons, the increasing percentage of women in the field is encouraging. Female membership in the SVS grew from 0.5% in 1985 to 5.6% in 2010. Within the field of vascular surgery, there are many options for women. According to SVS membership data, there is a higher percentage of women in the academic positions in vascular surgery than there are men. 46% of women in the SVS are in academic positions versus 34% of men. Physician membership in the American College of Phlebology, which draws from multiple specialties to concentrate on venous disease, is approximately 16% female. These numbers illustrate that women are interested in the academic pursuits of vascular surgery and may find more flexible options within a university setting. Academic medicine may offer the fulfillment of research and surgery, as well as the opportunity for national leadership and a balanced home life. There is ample evidence that the disease processes that vascular surgeons commonly deal with, diabetes, smoking, and aneurysm disease, affect women differently than they do men. We see this in the disproportionately poor outcomes in female populations that are treated for abdominal aortic aneurysms, carotid disease, and lower extremity ischemia. Women may also have different disease processes than men and may have more barriers to obtaining health care and may be more reluctant to undergo invasive procedures. Having more female vascular surgeons may increase research in these areas and may also make women more likely to seek the care of vascular surgeons. Many female patients prefer care from a female physician. Specialties with predominantly female patients, such as OBGYN, have approximately 75% of the trainees being women. Venous disease is becoming an increasing area of interest for both patients and vascular surgeons alike. The increased number of women in venous specialties most likely reflects both the patient population as well as the more controllable lifestyle of a venous specialist. A recent letter by some of the female leaders in vascular surgery highlights that both men and women entering medicine are interested in a lifestyle that allows for family, hobbies, and a personal life outside of medicine. Practice patterns reflect that vascular surgery offers these options, with venous treatment, endovascular procedures, and dialysis access being facets of the specialty that are growing in volume and can offer a very controlled lifestyle. Also becoming more accepted are concepts such as job sharing, working less than five days per week in a cohesive group approach to patient care. Although these options are not what all women want, they do open the door to both women and men who desire more time outside the hospital. As students see their mentors exploring these outside-the-box options and, more importantly, seeing happy, productive male and female practitioners, we will continue to attract the best people to treat vascular surgery patients. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.